What a pleasure to be back in Calgary, back in Alberta, seeing so many friends, uh, so, so many great old friends, uh, a handful of new friends as well, which is always nice to see as well. Um, I'm really, really excited uh, about this campaign, and not just because it's a campaign, although those of you who know me, and you all know me well, uh, know that I love to campaign. I love the opportunity to get out and talk with people about uh, the kind of country we're building, the kind of future we're building for them, for their kids. I like to challenge ourselves with the uh, the, the, the difficulties we're facing and talk about how we're going to overcome those difficulties together. And the way that Canadians and particularly Albertans have always overcome those challenges by rolling up our sleeves and working together to solve them. That is what you do in Alberta. That is what we do right across the country. But of course at the same time we have to uh, admit and recognize that Alberta has faced uh, a number of very difficult years over these past years. Uh, Albertans, particularly Calgarians, have been hard hit uh, by the challenges we faced in the oil sector. Uh, and that is something uh, that right across the country people recognize. People know that Albertans' hard work, Albertans' prosperity has contributed massively over the past decades to Canada's prosperity, to Canadians' prosperity. And now, as you've gone through difficult years, it's been really important for all of Canada to be there for Alberta, and we're working very hard on that, and we're going to continue putting your interests at the heart of everything we do, because that's what you deserve. That's what all Canadians deserve. And of course, one of the biggest challenges we've faced uh, in the oil sector is not being able to access new markets other than the United States. Right now, we sell 99% of our oil to the United States. And when you only have one customer for your product, uh, they get to have you literally over a barrel. Uh, and they give us a massive discount on our oil, combined with the fact that they've gone from importer of energy to now exporter of energy. So we need to have access to new markets. And people in the oil patch have known that for a long time. Stephen Harper knew that the entire time he was prime minister. But he wasn't able to get it done because he and the conservatives misunderstand the 21st century. You know, they love to talk about John A. Macdonald. And when John A. Macdonald wanted to build a railroad, he just decided where it would go, and that's where it got built. Well, that's no longer the way governments get things built now. In the 21st century, we need to talk about partnerships. We need to talk about long-term benefits. We need to talk about environmental impacts. Because yes, people need jobs and opportunities right now, but they also need to know that their kids are going to have good quality lives a generation from now, 50 years from now. And that challenge is something uh, that Stephen Harper went the wrong way on. What he built, instead of building pipelines to new markets, was extreme animosity towards the oil and gas sector. By marginalizing and attacking environmental groups, by ignoring indigenous concerns, he got not just those communities, but all Canadians worried about the future he was building, worried about the capacity of the federal government to take care of the big picture, of the long term, and not just the short term. And that's why when we got elected in 2015, we made a commitment. A commitment to do things differently. A commitment to do things the right way. Which means, yes, taking a leadership on environmental issues. Taking a leadership on building partnerships with indigenous peoples on the long road to reconciliation. Neither one of them are easy, and neither one of them are unanimous in terms of support. But we believe that not only it's the right way to get big projects built, but it's the only way to get projects like the trans Mountain Pipeline expansion built. And now you may wonder to yourself, because I know I have, why are the Conservatives so convinced and so vehement about it being a mistake to fight climate change, about it being a mistake to recognize the importance of consultation and partnership with indigenous peoples. Because you'll remember when the Federal Court of Appeals came down last summer and gave us all the terrible news that we hadn't done enough on consultation with indigenous peoples or on environmental uh, 
oversight and, and response to get the TMX built. What was the conservatives' response? It was either change the law or appeal the decision. They said, appeal the decision. It's the wrong decision. You can't do it that way. Well, if we had done what Jason Kenney and conservatives told us to do and appealed that federal court of appeals decision, the only people working this summer would be lawyers in courts instead of construction workers building that pipeline. That's going to happen. So why are the conservatives paying for lawyers instead of supporting workers? I mean, they're doing it uh, in their court challenges, trying to take the government to court because they don't think there should be action on climate change. Why do they not understand what all Canadians, and indeed all Albertans, understand, which is, yes, we need jobs and growth right now, but we also need to make sure we're building a better future for our kids, and that means taking care of the environment at the same time. Why do they refuse it's because it's been definitional for them. For them to admit that actually if you want to get things built, you do have to think about the environment and you do have to think about partnership and community in input. That would actually repudiate and contradict what they've been saying to Canadians for 10 years and it would have them admit that the 10 years of Stephen Harper were an abject failure for the oil sands and they won't do that, but we will. We will point out that they had the wrong idea about Albertans. They had the wrong idea about Canadians. We know, and we are moving forward on the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. And despite the opposition from some very vocal groups across the country, the way we are doing it is winning over people. We've seen, even in BC, in public polling, the support for the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, now that we've brought in the historic Oceans Protection Plan, now that we're moving forward on uh, reducing the noise for the southern resident killer whale pod, that we're partnering with Indigenous peoples, that we're talking about the profits from Trans Mountain being poured into green energy solutions for the future. These are the things that make people say, okay, it's part of a bigger plan as we move forward into building a new economy that will support our workers today and support their kids and grandkids tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. That's what we're doing. 